From the creator of James Axler's Deathlands comes an all-new series, Outlanders. In the aftermath of the Russian-American nuclear holocaust of 2001, America became the Deathlands. Now, two centuries later, a new order emerges to inflict its rule from within fortified cities. Beyond the walls are the Outlands, where a fragile freedom remains. Once a magistrate, fearsome warrior of the new order, Cain discovers a secret that has damned humanity since the dawn of history. Now, banished to the Outlands, he joins forces with Bridget Baptiste, flame-haired keeper of the Cobaltville archives, and Grant, brother-in-arms and weapons specialist. In the place that was once called New Mexico, Kane finds the first hidden clues to humanity's future. Point Bird, status. Under fire, a Vulcan Phalanx turret. Copy, take it out. Roger. Hang on, we're taking her into the canyon. Do you know why I had you brought here? No. Because you belong to me. From the day of your birth, you have belonged to me. As did your father. Who am I, the Baron Cobalt? I offer you the chance to be one of my chosen ones. Chosen for what? To hear the truth. Are you ready to hear the truth, King? We are old. When your race was wild and bloody and young, we were already ancient. Your tribe has passed. All of the achievements of man are dust. We are. They're on to us now. They've got some kind of weapon. I don't know what it is, but it's nasty. They almost got me. Yeah, they're trying to outflank us. The little fuckers sure are light on their feet. Here they come! Go, go, go! Get down! Catch the ride from the start. Outlanders number one, Exile to Hell. Available in May 2006. Welcome to the new reality. Welcome to the Outlands. It was time for many duties to begin, and the promenade was thronged with movement, with people heading to their duty stations in the administrative monolith. Even though they were of the Cobaltville elite, the people were subdued, many of them wearing self-conscious expressions of carefully calculated neutrality. Necessarily so, since frank self-expression could catch a magistrate's attention, and that could lead to any number of unpleasant consequences. Though he looked for her, Kane didn't see Bridget Baptiste. The only trash hatch they saw was being serviced by a sullen-faced outlander girl Hardly more than 12 years old, so Kane kept the disc in his coat pocket. Grant took the elevator to sea level. Time was growing short, and Kane wished he could stop off in the day room to wolf down a few sesame seed biscuits and swig a cup of sub. As it was, at least he was feeling a little closer to near human status again. They walked into the briefing room to find Salvo already standing at the lectern. Two dozen magistrates sat on the rows of hard benches, listening to Salvo with impassive faces. Salvo glanced up when Kane and Grant dropped onto one of the benches, but didn't even raise an eyebrow, so Kane figured Salvo hadn't reached his or Grant's orders for the day. Banyan and Coleman, intel section, collating Outland's reports. Leduc, Jessup, and Kovacs, agricultural section, security. Oris, Fielding and Newson, Manufacturing Section, Security. Boone, Grant, and Kane, PPP duty. Grant and Kane exchanged surprised glances, then shifted their stares to Salvo. PPP duty, Pedestrian Pit Patrol, was a first-year mag assignment. All newly badged enforcers were required to patrol the pits as part of their first-year duties, Generally, the patrol consisted of nothing more than checking ID chips to make sure they were Ville-approved and not bogus. Pit dwellers were stopped at random, ordered to present their left forearms for inspection, and a hand scanner would react positively if the subcutaneous chip was legit. 
PPP duty was supervised by one senior magistrate. Never a pair of them. Pits could be dangerous places, especially for rookie enforcers with no real combat experience, but there hadn't been a major outbreak of anti-mag violence in the Cobaltville pit in a generation. Even the latest in a long line of self-proclaimed pit bosses, a border runner named Guana Teague, kept an exceptionally low profile. And though it was true Boone had been recently awarded his badge and therefore was required to take patrol, assigning two veteran mags to nursemate him seemed ridiculous and a waste of resources. After the rest of the shift filed out, Kane approached the lectern. Tell me why. Why what? Pit patrol. It's a standard duty assignment. You should know that by now. Why the two of us? Salvo collected his papers and pushed past him. Why not? Where is it written that two senior magistrates can't be assigned to supervise a PPP? Without another word, he turned and strode out of the briefing room. Kane turned toward his friend, raising his hands in a gesture of exasperation. This is your fault, you know. A young, slender man of Asian extraction re-entered the room and moved toward Kane. I'm Boone. It's an honor to be working with you. Let's get this honor over with. They marched out into the corridor, Boone a bit behind, trying to match their impatient, long-legged stride. They stopped briefly at the tech desk so Boone could pick up a scanner. It was a small cylindrical gadget, not more than four inches long, with a two-pronged sensor probe at one end. At the private elevator, they showed the sentry on duty their badges. The sentry punched in the numbers on a miniature three-digit keypad, and the door panel rolled aside. They stepped into the car. The elevator was one of six shafts on sea level that dropped directly to the pits. The largest of the shafts was positioned in the armory and could accommodate an armored wag filled with a magistrate squad, just in case a pit outbreak had to be quelled. The sentry, with studied casualness, pressed a control toggle and set the lift for a fast descent. The platform seemed to suddenly drop from beneath their feet. Grant and Kane affected not to notice the feeling of their stomachs forcibly climbing into their throats. Remember the last PPP we worked? You mean when old Guana was paying hard jack for mag body parts? What? A weird fad. Pit dwellers tend to bore easy, need their diversions. What was it? Six gold creds for a mag nose, eight for a tongue? Yeah, and twenty for a set of balls. Getting those was a real bitch. When was this? Last year. Right, Grant? I never heard of that fad before. No wonder. Triple bad for morale. Salvo did his best to cover it up, but... Boone stumbled forward, his face bumping against the door panel. It slid aside, and he froze as the air of the Tartarus pits filtered into his nostrils. Kane and Grant exchanged grins, and Kane pushed the young man out of the car with a hearty backslap. Let's be careful out there. The price of balls may have gone up. 